in this section, we're gonna take a look at a very um, special type of probability called binomial probability. And to be a binomial probability, we have to have some really specific um, criteria met or characteristics down here. So we have to repeat an experiment a set number of times. The trials or those experiments have to be independent, which means one doesn't affect the other. Um, like rolling a dice. If I roll a dice and roll a five, I can still roll a five the next time or I might not. But whatever I rolled the first time has no effect on um, the second time or third time I do it. When we have each trial, we either have to get it or not. We have to have success or failure. There's no middle ground. And last, success, that probability of the success has to stay the same. So kind of going back to that dice, the probability of rolling a five is one six. Every time I roll the dice, the probability stays the same, it's one six. So I've got an example up here at the top. We're gonna draw a card from a deck and we're gonna see, we're gonna try to select a diamond. And we're gonna repeat this five times and a key word to make this one a binomial is we're gonna have to replace the card. So we're gonna look at the card and we're gonna put it back. So there's always gonna be 52 cards in the deck. That's what's gonna make this one a binomial probability as compared to when we've just been drawing more than one card out. Those would not be because we wouldn't be putting them back. So the amount of cards in the deck changes. All right, so we're gonna to have to look at some specific things here. Um, we're gonna use this notation I've got down here. I know it seems kind of random, but it's what we're gonna to use to help us type in the calculator in just a second. So the same card experiment, oops. We're going to look at down here. N stands for the number of times I'm repeating the trial. So it says repeat five times. So N is five. P is the probability of successfully getting a diamond. So that's 13 out of 52. You can leave it like that for when we type in the calculator, or you can reduce it down to one fourth. The calculator is going to be fine. Either way, we're going to get the right answer. Now, Q here, we haven't seen before. And we're actually not going to need it but for a second. It's kind of at the end of the section, but I'm going to go ahead and go over it. Q is the probability of failing up here, so of not getting it. So 1 minus, you can use the 13 over 52 or the 3 fourths. Either way, man, my pen's just going crazy. To get me 39 over 52, you also could use the 3 fourths the one-fourth to get three-fourths. So either one of those, they're the same thing. One's reduced down and one's not. Either one of those is Q. Now X kind of seems a little bit weird for the second. We're going to practice some of these in the calculator. X will make a lot more sense, but I'm going to ask you to find the probability of winning like at least two times or at least three times or at most four times. So X can be any number up to five. N was five, that's why I got that. So it's any number up to five. So one, or sorry, it could start with zero. Oops. It could be zero, one, two, three, four, or five. And I'm gonna be giving one of those in our um, directions when we get down to those problems. All right, so I've got another example here. It's gonna carry over to the next page. So it's gonna carry example one, tier A and B. So they go together. So just kind of be warned, it's, a, it's across two pages. So we've got a multiple choice test that has four questions on it, one, two, three, four. Each one of them has five choices. We can choose A, B, C, D, or E for each one of those. First, we need to make sure that we have a binomial experiment. So are there fixed repetitions? Yes, because there are four questions. Are the trials independent? Yes. We can choose whatever answer each time that we do it. I can choose A every single time if I wanted to. Are there two outcomes? Yes. You either get it right or you get it wrong. And are the probabilities of getting it right the same each time? Yep, there's always one answer and five choices. So this is a binomial experiment. Since it's a binomial experiment, I can find that N, P, Q, and X. So I'm still sticking with the same example one, but gonna come down here to B. N was the number of times, that's that four questions. 
P was that probability I already found, one-fifth. Remember, Q is the probability of getting it wrong. So one minus one-fifth, and you can type this in your calculator, gives you four-fifths. And X is going to be any number up to four. So zero, one, two, three, or four. Now we're going to use those in just a second to be able to type in our calculator. Um, so they'll make a little bit more sense when I get down to some of these other problems.